We're here at MCM Birmingham. <laughs> hey, welcome to Comic Con. Smart stall. So I really hope you enjoyed that look at Birmingham MCM. As you can see, I had a great time. It did get very, very busy later on though, which was kind of annoying, and for once we didn't have a table either, so we were just in there with everyone else walking around, checking out all the different stalls. Of course, I checked out quite a lot of game stalls, but the first thing I'm going to show here is this really cool Shadow the Hedgehog figure that I picked up. It looks really nice, and it's not very often you get to see Shadow the Hedgehog um, merchandise, so... Really happy to have that. Got to find somewhere to put it. As you can see, the game room's getting a little bit crowded, so sort of running out of space, but I'll find somewhere for it. Now for some of the games. And I've got one game that I'm going to leave until the end because that one wasn't from MCM. So the next one we're looking at here is Polarium Advance. I was a big fan of the DS version when that came out, when the DS was first released. Polarium is one of my favourite puzzle games, and if you want to know a few more of my favourite puzzle games, I actually just did my Top 10 Puzzle Games video, which was out last week, so I'll leave a, leave a link in the description so you can go and watch that one. Polarium is a really cool game, it's a very, very simple concept. You basically flip the tiles, either black and white or white and black, and you have to line up all of one colour and then they all disappear, so... Really simple game, but really fun, and surprisingly the GBA version is actually better than the DS one because it contains something called daily challenges. So every day for a year you could play this game and have a different challenge every day. The next game here, and this one's a boxed SNES game, this one is Pack Attack. Another puzzle game, I haven't, I've only ever played this one on an emulator before, I know, a naughty word, so very happy to have the actual version, and it was fairly cheap, it was. £16 it says there. I think it was from Press Start Gaming. They're a really great store. And Polarium Advance was £7. I don't know if that's any good or not, but it's not a game you come across very often. So yeah, really happy to have Pack Attack. I haven't tried it yet, but I'll definitely give it a go before this video goes up and put some footage over it so you guys can see what it's like. 
And another puzzle game here. This is another one that surprisingly I didn't already have. I've got it on the Game Boy, as I'm sure you know. This one is Tetris 2. And I just remembered I've also got it on the Super Famicom as well. It's got a slightly different name on there, I think. Tetris 2 is a really good puzzle game. It's kind of a mix of Tetris and Dr. Mario, and it actually works really well. It's not as fast paced as the original Tetris game, but I still really enjoy it and highly recommend it if you want to try something a bit different in the Tetris formula for the NES. Really good game. And that was £12 from the same store. Now some more additions to my never ending quest to get the entire UK release of Game Boy games. The next two that I got for the collection here are Alfred Chicken, yes, not the most exciting game ever, and Blues Brothers. This one was a bit more expensive. Um, I got all three of these for, I think, 20, 15, 20 maybe. The other one here is called Power Quest by Sunsoft. This one's a really interesting RPG slash fighting game. It actually plays really well, it's a very unique concept. The other two are just basic platformers, nothing to get really that excited about, but I have to get some of the shovelware stuff in with the gems to complete my collection. I don't know what I'm going to do when I've got a complete collection, but that's my goal. And speaking of collection goals, my next video for next week is actually going to be my collecting and channel goals for the rest of this year, so look forward to that video coming next week. So there's three more Game Boy games that I picked up. And now... Um, the last game that I got from MCM, I didn't get a huge amount of games this time, surprisingly. The last one I picked up, it's a game for the DS, as you can see, that I've been looking for for a long time. One of my, I think you saw it there, one of my favourite series, Mega Man Battle Network 5 for the DS, called Double Team, or Double Team DS as it's called here. I'm surprised they didn't go with something that's D and S like they did for a lot of other early DS releases. This one was 25, it says right there, and I was a little bit worried when I got back because I noticed on the back of the box there's no English, but thankfully the game itself is in English and I'm very excited to play it because I absolutely love the Mega Man Battle Network games and this is one that for some reason I didn't get at launch but I really wanted to, so very very happy to finally have Mega Man Battle Network 5 for the DS. I just remembered it wasn't in the pile with the other games but this is actually the one that I was most excited to find so I'm really glad I remembered to put it in the video here. The last N64 game that I was looking for out of all the games on my wish list, so really, really excited to find this one. It's called Iggy's Wrecking Balls, and it's a really, really interesting game. It's kind of a racing game mixed with a platformer, kind of something like Uni Racers or Uni Rally for the SNES, but all in 3D, and I think it supports up to four players, but I always thought it looked like a really interesting game, so I'm really excited to finally have this one. And I think it was only about a fiver as well, so really incredibly excited to find this one. I think I actually gasped when I saw it and just snatched it up straight away. I wish I'd caught my reaction on camera because it was so funny. But yeah, really, really excited to get this. Now, I don't know what else to do for the N64. This is the last game that I actually wanted for the system, so there we go. Maybe I'll end up getting a full set of 64 games at some point in the future as well. And I did say I was missing one game out, this one here. I got from CEX, I'm not going to call it Kex because I get told off for calling it that, from CEX in Telford. This is Grandia 2 for the Dreamcast. And the amazing thing is, it was in the shop window for 35 and I'd actually seen it the week before I went to uh, MCM Comic Con, and I actually saw it at the con on one of the tables for 70 quid. So I went back the day after and picked this up, thinking it would be 35 and they actually scanned it in at 30 which is just fantastic. Apparently, it's one of the best RPGs ever. I've only ever played a little bit of it on a copy that I used to have for the Dreamcast, so very happy to finally have a legit version of Grandia 2. Really looking forward to trying it out, and I'll be trying it out using... Moving on to the next pickup I got. This is something I got for my birthday off my girlfriend. This, if you don't know already, is called an OSSC, and it's basically a line doubler or tripler. Basically takes your old game console... Uh, signals, whether it's through RGB or S-Video or um, well, I'm not sure what else it can do but I'll mostly be using it for RGB to HDMI and it basically upscales the image and makes it look really nice and crisp. Unfortunately the one I got here didn't come with the plug or the 
um, the remote for it. I've managed to order a plug and that turned up the other day, but I'm still waiting for the remote to arrive. So I can only do the very basic, uh, literally just put the signal in and display it on the screen. I can't mess around with any of the settings yet, which is something I'm really excited about doing. So I'll definitely be making a video on this in the future when I get all the necessary accessories to be able to use it properly. Really excited to finally get one though. I'm really, really excited. And hopefully it's gonna make my videos a lot better in the future as well, because definitely going to improve the quality a lot. And that was all the games that I picked up at the Expo. I also got this Game Boy Money Box here, which is pretty cool. So if you tilt it like that, you can see a little scene from Mario Land 2. So that's really nice to have. I'm putting all my spare change in there at the minute. And while we're showing off new things, here's something fairly exciting that I got from eBay. Um, yes, I know I have a lot of magazines already, but I don't have many here. And I thought it'd be really fun to read an old Game Boy magazine as I'm into Game Boy collecting at the minute. So really happy to have this. It's really interesting to look back and see what they were excited about back in 1992. So I might do more of an in-depth video on this in the future. Maybe have a read through some old gaming magazines because I love doing that in my spare time anyway. So I might make a video on it and show you guys some of the cool stuff from these old magazines. Really fun to go back and read them. And one more exciting thing before I wrap this video up. Some of you guys might know what this is, some of you might not. This is called the DJI Osmo Pocket and it's a, a pocket camera and as you can see it has a stabilization as well. It's got a gimbal on the back and it's really really cool and you can press it three times like that and it spins around so you can do it in selfie mode for taking vlogs. So hopefully a lot of my vlogs in the future will be a lot more um, watchable by using this rather than holding my phone or my camera out in front of me. I can just sort of hold this up and I'm also planning on using it at more expos and gaming events throughout the rest of this year so definitely really looking forward to trying this out. And that's it for this episode guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want to pledge a little bit and see these videos slightly early. I've been really busy recently so they haven't been going up that much more early than usual, but hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things soon. Of course, subscribe if you're new here, very good to have you, thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you next week for another episode. Goodbye.